He's the instigator. He's the sneaky one you do not trust. If you trust him, he will run away. I've got a theory about how this and this go together. It comes down to using your brain to look at the really logical things that are right in front of your eyes, the big picture things that you often miss when you get bogged down in the minute little details. You have to be able to think outside of the box. Once you start doing that, you'll start joining dots a lot quicker. And when you do that in a creek, you'll find a lot more gold because you'll walk into the one spot that everyone else has overlooked, even though it's staring you right in the face. To improve my ability to think laterally, I'm doing puzzles like this and riddles. So, without further ado, we're going to get into this. I'm going to give you another riddle, and I'm going to give you the answer to the riddle that I gave you in the last video. The links for those videos are in the description. Just before we crack this bad boy open, I want to cover the riddle that we did at the start of the last episode of Bogus Prospecting. The riddle was quite simple. Uh, it was a father and son are traveling down a highway, and they get into a horrible car accident. Unfortunately, the father dies, and the child is rushed immediately to hospital. Upon arriving at the emergency ward, the doctor looks down at the child and says, I am afraid I cannot operate on this patient, for he is my son. Now, the answer is... He, the uh, doctor, was the mother. Now, it becomes really obvious when you look at it like that, doesn't it? But it's made tricky because the whole connotation leading up to it is father-son. So you're thinking male, um, male the whole way through, and then the general stereotype for a doctor is a male. So your brain has to think laterally, who else can have a son? And that would be the mother. So Hannah Yamana? I can they'll probably pronounce that terribly, but made from cast puzzles um, and made by a company called Be Puzzled. I'll open it up and see what we get in the box. If I can't open the box, that will be a bad start. It's got tape on it, that's why. So it says, can you take it apart and now try and put it back together again? Oh wow, they've got a lot of puzzles. This is the puzzle. And the goal is to get these rings separated. Okay, so we have to use logic to get these apart. Quite clearly, quite clearly the gap here is not big enough to let this through. But there are a couple of Oh, there's a couple of things I can I could notice straight away that are different on each one. So for instance, the ring on the right here has a notch. So I'm betting that notch has something to do with it. They also have dots on the on the end ring. So this is this end ring's got one, that's got two, and that's got three. So potentially in order. Uh, that's also got a different notch on it once again. So you got one notch on the end ring. The other end ring has a different placed notch. Okay, let's try and get it out. So I'm thinking that these these little standouty bits here have to hook into these notches for some reason. That that would be the first place my mind goes. But why? But if we look at this gap here, that gap might slot into that lip somehow but that, to do that I'd have to twist it is it twistable maybe the dots have something to do with the order that they have to go in so maybe you have to do this one first and then these two will separate notch there like that oh oh hang on a second they fit together. So when I have when I have the center ring notched into the number one ring gap, I can then wedge this in between the two. But what advantage does that give me? It's got to be something to do with that rolling. What if I roll this? Can I roll that? Oh, 
Ugh. All right. Oh, hang on a minute. What if they? All right. So there's. I just realized that there's more than one place that 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 notch could fit. We could fit it up under the lip there. It's just in here. But does that give me any advantage? Knowing that. It's got to be like, you've got to like put a maze together, I feel, and then run the center ring out of it. So I feel like this notch and then this notch, which are different, would at some point create a, a system for you to get, for you to get it out. Alright, so this ring and this ring are not connected, so if I can switch that ring onto that ring, how would I do that? The logic puzzle, so there is a way that these pieces fit together to come apart. They had to go together somehow. It will fit this way, okay. Oh, no what? <laughs> and then I can fit that in and it'll get out. That's gonna work, that's gonna work, that's gonna work. I swear to god, okay. So I've gotta remember how to put this back together. Get this right, the number three link has a deep groove cut into it. The number one link has a shallow groove cut into it. Putting those two together would allow enough space for those links to come apart. Oh, I don't even know if that's going. To, I don't even know if that's right. All right, I won't have to leave this for tonight because my battery on the old GoPro is low. I shall return to this brain teaser in the, in the morning. It's now the next morning, and where I left you last night, I had changed the order of the rings by flipping them. So the one and the two and the three are now in the order of the one, the three, and the two. And it literally kept me awake all night thinking about this. And I think I've worked it out. I think I have worked it out. Because um, you think of a chain in dimensions like this. So horizontal. You think of them as one link, two link, three link. But you don't think of them in 2D uh, dimensions. And 2D dimensions are is this way with the squares and that's how I got it there with the flipping I worked it out because the the gap here that big gap there is to get one of these chains out of the way while you flip it what had to happen is you had to get the middle chain which was uniform on both sides out of the way of these two ones because these two chains here have different sized heads on them and that allows them to flip so I'm thinking that these two flip out of each other. If we get this out of the way, so we use this gap to get the uniform head out of the way. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Alright. So the number so the number two piece is the first piece to come off because that gets itself out of the way. So I had to I had to first flip it so the number one and the number three piece were touching. So I flipped it through. Then to get the number two piece out, you have to utilize the little gap in the arm of the chain to slot into that big gap. And that then allows you enough room to flip out the number two chain. So theoretically speaking, these should just come apart now. Should. <laughs> he says, I've only done, I haven't done all of it until it's apart. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes! Uh, to get it apart took me one hour and 25 minutes in total. One hour and 25 minutes. I wonder if I can put them back together just straight up. So that's your middle piece.
There we go. Got it. One, two, three. In order. Taking it apart. Put back together. I'm wearing a bathrobe, but I freaking did it. Awesome. That took so long to do. From start to finish, we're at one and a half hours, thereabouts. Um, that That is a tricky puzzle. It's deceptively simple, but that was really cool to do. That was awesome fun. Um, these sort of brain exercises are what keep you... Well, A, fights off Alzheimer's doing puzzle things like this, which is really cool. But more importantly, for me, <laughs> yeah, it expands your ability to, to logically think about a problem. So, you know, you'd be in a gold-bearing creek and not be able to find it. But then once you start thinking logically about the type of gold that you've got um, and, and the way that the creek runs and, and what sort of landscapes around you, you can start putting the pieces together. I want to get better at reading them. So that's what I've done. On another note, I wanted to talk to you about another prize that has been donated by Snowy Whips. So the fundraiser we are having in March, or that I am having in March, I keep saying we, because me and all of my imaginary friends, <laughs> the um, the fundraiser I'm holding in March, uh, a lot of people have jumped on board and I'm showcasing all of the prizes that have been donated for the international giveaway, um, you know, open to Australia and the rest of the world. Uh, these prizes are just amazing. We've got a gold nugget from Gary Two Toes. We've got a Gator Sluice from Croc Gold there in the last two videos that I've put up. And we've also got this bad boy. Now, I am not taking it out of the plastic because I know if I do, I'll be tempted to try and crack it and that will just end up in disaster. <laughs> but this is a whip, a full-blown proper cattle whip. It's six foot long. It's an eight braid, I think it was, an eight plat, uh, made with kangaroo leather. Um, it is just amazing. It's got a six by seven Turk's head knot on it. And these are things I'm learning about whips as we speak. Um, so this can be all yours. It's worth $300 donated by Snowy Whips. Uh, and it's a beautiful bit of Australian made equipment. So if you're a rancher out in Texas uh, or you're uh, a sheep farmer, there's one person I'm talking to in particular here. If you're a sheep farmer, surely you'll need a whip. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. So thank you to Snowy Whips. For, whips? Snowy Whips? Snowy Whips for donating this. Um, it's a fantastic prize. I absolutely love it. It looks amazing. And I've been so tempted to play with it. But I'm not going to. I'm going to remain strong. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ah, I'm out.